Hello, Scorpio and Scorpio season. It's a moment, God Tarot. We're doing a somebody secretly talking about you tarot card reading. Let's go. Let's go. First card, boom. You got a Capricorn talking about you again. Because how many times have I done a Scorpio reading and a Capricorn energy pops up? This energy around you is serious, materialistic, and hardworking. It bestows shrewdness and cautious ambition. Wow. Scorpio, this is just your type, though. It's just your type. You like Capricorns, or at least you respect them to some degree. Let me know if you disagree. But I think you guys have some sort of connection because you guys are always showing up. Well, they're always showing up in your readings. I don't know how much you show up in theirs. But let's let's not jinx it. Your next card. Oh, ho, ho. You, got, you got Capricorn's Planetary Ruler double dose of Capricorn energy, the part of you that accepts challenge to gain wisdom. But you see, that's why I say you and Scorpio, you, Scorpio and Cap, Cap, tip of the tongue. Capricorn and Scorpio have this connection because you guys both have this like discipline thing or this willpower thing going. And I, I, I kind of respect it. But I feel like this is like a part of you coming out, talking about you as far as like your social status, your economic status, your lifestyle, and maybe even just areas of where you need to show a little more discipline. Some of you got triggered, so that's the area I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, last card. Ooh, the sun. That's cool. Your immortal spirit, purpose, destiny, and destiny is involved. This is your sense of self. Uh, this is about your purpose. Of course, your destiny involves your purpose. And so, again, we're talking about discipline. We're talking about Capricorn. I feel like maybe, what, you got a Capricorn guiding your way? As far as discipline, maybe you take an example from a Capricorn. You let a Capricorn lead. This could also mean work stuff and showing discipline there. Maybe you want to up the ante in your career. Um, but, yeah, these are great things, discipline, to talk about. But hopefully it's not disciplinary because, oh, my goodness. The sun is also associated with Leo, and that's a lot of that's a lot of charisma and personal magnetism, a lot of vivaciousness in the personality, very flamboyant, if you will. Now, Capricorn is with that Leo energy, perfect dynamic for success. So I'm wondering about this this three, because like, ooh, it's like giving good energy at least. If this this is a personified person, this is a vibrant person, and this is a disciplined person. They work hard, they play hard, but they I feel like they have like. They're successful and they have that Mark Cuban energy to them. They're like charismatic as well. So, all right, if this is representing a person that's talking about you, okay, go ahead and talk. Go ahead and talk. You seem to know what you're doing as far as business and discipline and willpower and stuff like that and purpose, all the deep stuff. But let's see what you're talking about. Because if that's what that's the type of time you're on, that's the type of vibe you're pushing out of your, your body, why are you talking about Scorpio? Scorpio, Scorpio, could be could be a Capricorn, could be a Leo. Either way, it's talking about some level of discipline, some level of growth and status. So let's 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 have a keen eye here and see what the cards will say. One last shuffling. All right, your first card is the Knight of Swords. Ooh, drama. Knight of Swords. Yeah, drama, sure. But the drama is caused by the Knight of Swords energy their tendency to kind of fly off the handle, be very reactive before they know all of the information. So that would be a warning to you. And this could even just be a person that is giving that swords energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and they're just yapping, yapping, yapping. They're talking, they're saying things before they know everything. You know, that this is this is how this is the the ground zero of of the drama. So why are you doing that, you know? Oh God, then we have the Nine of Swords and this is anxiety. This is stress. So this person's stressing you out. There might be somebody at work, a boss. You know, some a boss it, it could be putting the pressure on, stressing you out, making you think about your purpose, making you think about if you're on the right track, is this for you? Bigger bigger themes guaning. But I feel like um, this person may even be talking about you from a place of anxiety. There's drama, there's anxiety. This person obviously, <laughs> gossip too. We got a lot of swords going here, so Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, you're coming forward. Okay, you're coming forward up in this reading. And we're having two archetypes of people. We have the, you know, younger but more experienced person, and then we have the younger, immature behavior of a page of swords who's just, again, doing talking, not... And, and, and sometimes even talking, like, wording it in a manipulative way. So you have somebody, like, that's just rattle, ruffling feathers. 
I don't like it, you know? I don't, oh my gosh, what are you guys on? You see I've been shuffling, or you hear I've been shuffling between each each pull, and we're getting pure swords. So, Scorpio, this season's your birthday time. What are you stressing out about? What's so stressful? What, it, it seems like people, though, if, if I'm being fair, could be like a uncle, could be a brother, could be a friend, a peer. This could be a younger sibling. This could be somebody that is younger than you that you work with. It could be like the immaturity, the age gap. You know, the anxiety is in between the gap of whatever, the, the distance between ages with the, with whoever's involved. And then we have the Queen of Swords. That could even be a mother figure, a supervisor, a boss, upper high level boss. And then, bam, these two are in reverse, giving us a little bit of manipulation tactics or just maybe even abuse of power. So you could be, somebody could be a well under your skin um, and then we have the Queen of Pentacles. Yeah, so it's feeling more a little bit like bo a boss kind of thing. We might have two bosses, uh, one not so nice, one kind, a kind boss, possibly of Earth descent, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. But I really think it's just pointing us at the workforce. So who's talking about you? Okay, well we got Capricorn, Leo, we got the Air Signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. They could all be talking about you. And I don't feel like this is not a sharp-tongued conversation, which means this person may be a little blunt about what they're saying. This person could be just filling with, with fluff and embellishments because of the, just the drama, the gossip, the nature of the spread. Um, and either way, it's either causing them anxiety or you anxiety. Of course, if they're talking up all these lies or saying things that they shouldn't be saying, they probably have stress about it. Are you gonna find out? Are you gonna say it to her? Don't tell her I said that. Don't tell him that, like, you know, like there's anxiety that goes with the, sh with the sh talking. So, and then also this person may be causing you anxiety because you might just sense it. You might just, even if you don't know, you might just sense it. That, that falls into that Knight of Swords energy too that you might be emulating. Um, but this person, why are you doing, what are you doing? Scorpio's already in the harshness of reality. Most of the time you're gonna talk about Scorpio and then you're gonna add some more drama. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. When I saw the Knight of Swords, I was like, well, that could be you or them. Because, you know, Scorpios, sometimes, sometimes you get mad. You know that. I don't know how to tell you that. It's that Mars in you. It's that, that Mars energy that's very aggressive, very conflicting, very passionate. And sometimes it's just like, you know, you know, that's going to cause World War III. So just relax. But that could be on either end because it's, it's about who's talking about you. I don't like all the swords when we're saying this person is talking about you because you, you get to sense the tone like, and uh, lots of scoffing when they're talking about you. Drama and gossip. They're, so that's why I go, is it, oh, is it true? Is it true? And then it makes me go, oh, this might be at the workplace. This might be your guidance to stay on track, stay on course, don't get caught up in the drama, the gossip. Stay with the heavyweights, the bosses, the leaders, play the game. Do the Capricornian thing and look at your social status. Look, make sure your reputation is in check. Yeah, somebody can throw you off balance when they start yapping and saying stuff that isn't true. But if it's not true, you don't have to worry about it. And you never have to clap back because people who do this and have all this swordsy energy, this backbiting, fair weather energy, controversial, there's always a problem. It, they, they're going to just attract problems to them eventually and with other people around them eventually. And then you don't even have to say anything. Other people will figure it out. Um, and it usually reveals itself. And I feel like that's worth the warning because purpose and, and destiny is involved here. And so what's gonna happen is gonna unfold anyway. And then we have two doses of hate, discipline, willpower. What is willpower in a, in a situation where someone's talking about you negatively or with just kind of cutting words? It's, it's discipline, it's stoicism, it's being not reactive, it's being the opposite, it's being calm when somebody's trying to get a rise out of you. And it's using personal magnetism, using charm, using your charisma to kind of navigate situations. I always think of it as like, if only you can deal with situations while you're observing them and do it like, like, a, like a slick, smooth, suave character on a TV show who knows the right thing to say. The right rebuttal that's charming, classy, they know how to do the thing that is strategic. And as an observer, you would say, yeah, oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's smart. But like when you're in the moment and it's you, it's kind of like, oh, well, yeah. Well, your breath smelled weird that other day. You know, you get petty too. That's not a good look. So that Queen of Pentacles, I kind of want to look at a little more because like, where'd you come from? You, it was so bleak. And then you came here with opportunity, you know, holding the coin, Queen of Pentacles, showing kindness, using power not to provide opportunity in the sense of like, here's a thing, but here's a path for you to get the thing. 
So that's very generous. And especially, I feel like the discipline will show usually is like a challenge, accepting challenges to gain wisdom. But I feel like the end of the, the rainbow is, or the silver lining is this opportunity here. So it's almost like if you're dealing with someone at work or you're dealing with energy at work, that's very gossipy, very chatty, very just people with their own agendas and they're doing things either manipulatively just because they're bored just being salacious and negative I feel like you know this kindness at the end of it will see everything for what it is they will they're seeing upright you know they're they have a light up in here they got live animals not sharks around them there's a gentleness a calmness and a compassion to them so I feel like that being at the end of your spread is a little more symbolic and it resonates a lot more with the the themes because all that earth by the way um but it's very grounded and very stable and i feel like it's at the end because there's a lesson here and i think the lesson is again it connects to just holding true staying keeping your feet firmly planted on the ground and just being true to who you are staying disciplined staying with your routine no matter how anybody tries to verbally throw you off mentally throw you off no matter what people say stay on track do the right thing do stay on a course of integrity and you know, just believe in your purpose. Just have self-belief. Uh, have the confidence of a Leo. They just want to have fun. They have confidence. Um, and they're just a very vibrant zodiac sign. So, you know, there will be, it's usually a light at the end of the tunnel, right? So it just feels like there's an opportunity at the end of the hardship. There's an opportunity at the end of the people. And maybe it's even a lesson. Maybe at some stage in your life, you reflected these type of values. Gossipy, talk too much, say too much before you know everything, yada, yada, yada. Um, and it filled you with anxiety. So maybe it's a lesson of showing, you know, when you come to that cycle again in your life, you pass the test because you're like, uh, no, nah, I'm going to stay focused. I'm not going to get emotional and make a irrational decision or impulsive decision at all. I'm going to keep my nose to the grindstone. All right. And then this queen right here will see you. All right. If you're not that queen yourself, there will be a light at the end of the tunnel and there's a goal there's something to fulfill. There's a purpose. There's a reason for all this. All right. So there it is. I'm going to leave you with that, Scorpio. That's your reading. I hope you get happy Scorpio season. Um, I hope you enjoyed your reading. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. And yeah, check out my Etsy shop if you have any time. Got all sorts of natural wax candles and home fragrances. Um, yeah. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.